Okay, so today I'm going to derive the uh, fine element stiffness matrix for a one-dimensional rod element. Um, this is about as simple as element as you can get. It consists of two nodes, and then the uh, bar element connects the two nodes. Uh, we'll call this node one, and that's node two. All right, at each node, we can have a displacement d1 and d2 for nodes one and two respectively so it allows for this element to move in any arbitrary manner but only along the, the x line so we'll call this the x direction okay this element cannot move out of that uh, x axis okay so it only uh, deals with motion in the x direction so this is a bit idealized but this allows us to analyze things like uh, um, tension and compression of bars uh, like you did in strength materials. Okay, uh, we also have at each node an externally applied force. We'll label those F1 and F2 respectively and you'll note that all the positive directions for the nodal displacements and the externally applied forces are all in the positive X direction. So we're always going to keep this consistent. All right. Even though you might look at this and say, well, F1 has to be in the opposite direction of F2 to balance it out. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's in equilibrium, uh, you'll just get a sign change when you solve for it, okay? So it's not a big deal, all right? Okay, so we want to find the stiffness matrix. This is going to be the entity, we'll call it KE, that's going to relate the nodal displacements, D1, and D2 to the externally applied forces, F1 and F2. Okay, so this is going to be a two by two matrix, right? So this is what we want to derive. Okay, so it's quite simple. Uh, we're going to use a direct stiffness approach. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to look at doing sum of forces on each one of the nodes. So let's first look at sum of forces on the first node. So we're going to consider a little uh, section just to the right of node 1. So if I redraw that, this is node 1. Here's a, a little bit of the section just to the right. We have the externally applied force F1 and that's balanced by an internal force. Okay. And that internal force is the force that arises from the fact that the bar is going to have some internal stress. So we're going to assume that the stress is positive when it's in tension. So a tensile stress is positive. So if this bar is in tension, then the internal force is going to act to the right, all right? And it's going to act on this cross-sectional area. So its value is going to be the internal stress, sigma, times the cross-sectional area. A. Okay? I should also mention when I talked about this element that the element has certain properties. We're going to assume we know the material stiffness given by Young's modulus, the cross sectional area A, and the length of the element. Okay? So we have those three parameters. So A is given to us for that element. All right. Um, we don't want to deal with the stress as the unknown variable, we need to get the stress in terms of the nodal displacements. So that's quite easy. The stress using Hooke's law is Young's modulus times the strain. And the strain is going to be, using uh, um, small deformation theory, it's the change in length over the original length of the element. So here's the original length of the element that's given to us. We assume this is going to be small deformation, so that doesn't change too much. And then the change of length is simply going to be d2 minus d1 over the length. So that's the strain. All right? So note why we want to keep, uh, if d2 is greater than d1, the bar is elongating. So delta L is positive, the strain is positive, and the stress is positive. If D1 is greater than D2, then the bar is compressing, 
delta L will be negative, you'll get a negative strain and a negative stress, a compressional stress. Okay, so all this gives us um, A E on L times D2 minus D1. That's the external applied force when I just substitute all this stuff back into here for sigma. Okay, so if we look at the uh, sum of forces on node 1 again, it's equal 0 for node 1. All right, this will give us F1 plus sigma A is equal to 0. Okay, they're all acting to the right, so they're both positive, so that's the force balance on node 1. Now, substituting in uh, uh, AE on L, uh, D1 minus, D2 minus D1 for sigma A, we get the following. Equals zero. And now we can just do some manipulation. We'll move F1 to the right-hand side, and then multiply by minus one, so the F1 stays positive, and we get a E on L D1 minus D2 is equal to F1. So that's force balance on the first note.